and welcome to EnviroVision, the show which looks at the climate crisis in the context of the London Borough of Hillingdon. Today we speak to Hannah Crowther, a 21-year-old student from Hillingdon. In late 2019, Hannah collected over a thousand signatures from local residents, urging the council to call a climate emergency, something they did eventually in January 2020. Over the past year, Hannah has been in contact with the council, regularly speaking to council cabinet members, pushing them to take actionable steps to implement the motion. 14 months on, we will ask, what has the council done to tackle the climate crisis? Welcome, Hannah. Uh, hey, Jacob. How, 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 I, I, I have to say, I really th think the photos on the back of your wall are quite, <laughs> are quite, are quite decent. Like, what, 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 what inspired them? They look quite creative art thingies. Yeah, um, they're just like postcards and photos. I've just kind of collected a bit of music, and yeah. um, I'm quite into dance, and there's like a little dance yeah. cutout at the top there. Yeah, yeah, I just like collect everything and stick yeah. it up my wall. It creates a very creative, um, creative yeah. aesthetic, and all that. it's very impressive. I have to say, yeah. <laughs> um, Hilling Council declared a climate emergency in January 2020. Um, what has come out of this, Hannah? Yeah, so um, honestly, not a lot. Um, so the climate emergency was declared in January. Um, it's now March of 2021, or it may be, yeah, still just the end of March. Um, we've had 14 months and the council have just published their draft climate plan, which is a great first step, but it really should have happened over a year ago. And other councils have been leading the way for a long time. Um, so this draft plan, um, it sets out how the council would, will reduce its own emissions. So like its buildings, um, its fleet vehicles and say street lighting. However, it just doesn't go far enough. It really needs to be way more ambitious. Um, and really, there's just not enough detail on getting the community involved. And I think that that just has to be like the centre of any climate strategy at the moment. Can the council actually do though to uh, ta help tackle climate change? Yeah, um, there's actually quite a lot of stuff they can do um, and some things they have been doing already. So like retrofitting social housing, so council housing. Um, there has been some movement on that, but really there's no commitment in this current plan to expand that. So we need the council to commit to kind of evaluating all of its social housing stock to see where the biggest gains can be made um, and also to relieve um, fuel poverty as well. Um, so, you know, these are impacts that would, you know, reduce fuel bills for the people who are the kind of most vulnerable at the moment and they'd have massive savings uh, for the climate as well. So it's a win-win. Um, and we need um, basically a climate assembly. And if you haven't heard of a climate, climate assembly, it's a way of getting just normal people involved, uh, not just experts, not just business people, not just politicians, to kind of make all the decisions that are at the end of the day going to affect us. It's a really exciting proposal, actually. Um, I know that there's like a big divestment movements on campus and things about getting their universities to divest from fossil fuels. It, does Hillingdon invest much in fossil fuels, in coal or oil? And is there anything that, that can be done there in the climate plan to help tackle climate, the climate crisis? Yeah, so um, the council uses the local government pension fund, um, which all of its uh, you know, um, staff use. Um, and that is invested in various places and includes fossil fuels. So the council can use its influence to try and push for those to be divested. So um, stop investing in fossil fuels and reinvest it in more green funds, basically. So that is one way they can have an impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, but council budgets are very tight at the moment. Mm, uh, yeah. Why should the climate crisis be prioritised? We've obviously had local government funds being dramatically cut back since uh, 2010 uh, and the period of austerity and there's so many other crises going on obviously the care crisis in social, social care uh, council funds need to be in lots and lots of different places so why should the council prioritize funding into tackling the climate crisis yeah um definitely like the impact on local councils has just been massive. Like it's been almost 50% reduction in funds. Um, so 
and the COVID obviously has had a mass massive impact. But at the end of the day, if COVID was bad, the climate crisis is not worth thinking about. This is going to affect our food, our water, local flooding, extreme heat, extreme cold. And basically the most vulnerable are going to be hit first, but we're all going to be hit by this in the long run. And when I say the long run, I mean 20, 30 years. This is not, you know, past our lifetimes. This is happening now and it's very, very real. So we need local action wherever it can be done. So the national government has a massive role to play and at the moment they're just not doing enough. But local government also needs to take a lead as well. And they are just uniquely placed in that they are a local network that everyone in the borough is kind of connected by. So your schools, your voluntary organisations and charities, you've got your businesses, um, just normal people, residents who pay their council tax. We've all got Hillingdon Council as this kind of central um, kind of point, which we can use to kind of get some grassroots action going. And I think in other councils where people have just kind of got involved, um, there's so much that can be done like as community initiatives. Um, there's so much that we can, can be done in like investing in local kind of green energy projects that then deliver a return for residents. So people can kind of invest um, their money in something local that delivers climate um, uh, improvements and they get something out of it as well. So there's all these things that can be done just by having opening up that conversation, starting a climate assembly and just getting everyone involved. Yes, starting a conversation is is really important, and all of this uh, and, in, and investing all of these projects. It seems quite common sense to invest in something like renewable energy that then brings a return. But like, why? I, I assume that a, a climate assembly would 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 cost something, and why? What 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 is the importance of a climate assembly that would justify the cost it might entail? Okay, sure. Um, so it doesn't have to cost that much. Um, I think the main costs really are just reimbursing people for their time because we need to make sure that everyone has access to it. So that means you know if you're a single mum that you can afford childcare for your child where you, while you come and attend this climate assembly. Um, or maybe someone who's just working otherwise. So it's just making it accept accessible so people are just paid a decent amount for the time that they spend coming to these. Um, but really it shouldn't cost a lot. You just need, you need to get the experts involved to present some information so that people are kind of well-informed on the decisions available. But really, you know, this can be done in a local space. You just allocate people, make sure that people are properly re represented um, and, the benefits could just you know ripple out to the rest of the borough yeah fantastic you mentioned um about the consultation earlier and about the fact the council have just launched their consultation what should people be putting in that consultation how should people be responding if they want to see bold action climate um, uh, assembly might be one thing what else should people put into their responses in order to push the councils to take the bold action they they need to take uh to really tackle the climate crisis yeah so yeah one climate assembly two social housing needs to be retrofitted um we need energy inf efficiency minimum requirements for new buildings um so currently there's just there's national standards, but we need to go further than that. And the council as um, a planning authority can approve or and not approve local buildings being built. So if it says we need to have them built to this standard uh, of energy efficiency, you know, that's building in uh, improvements for a very long time. Um, we need new money allocated to this. So currently the plan just doesn't set out any new money for um, climate improvements, which is ridiculous because yes, this is going to cost money, but the returns means we can live on a habitable planet in, in the big picture, but we can also have like local benefits as well. This shouldn't be, you know, we, it's not just about sacrificing. There are a lot of things that we can do that can actually improve our own lives locally and health. Um, so yeah, just to sum up some of those, we've got climate assembly, got push for retrofitting of social housing, 
Um, we've got minimum energy efficiency requirements for new builds and new money for the climate improvements. Fantastic. Also, like we live in the constituency which naturally has the prime minister of the country and the Hillingdon Council is of the same political party as the prime minister. Is there anything that we can do to pressure the council to pressure the government? I'm sure that the council would have quite, a, uh, quite an impact upon uh, Boris Johnson if it were to say, you've got to, uh, please, can you put more money into retrofitting or something like that? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, our local council, we've, you know, we've got um, a local MP called Boris Johnson, don't we? So Actually, as you do, they, yeah. are, they work together really closely. So there's a lot that can be done in lobbying um, Boris Johnson and the national government to do more, which we really, really need. I mean, just recently, I think, was it yesterday I was reading that there's a new green fund that was a flagship policy of um, the national government's kind of climate plan. And they're going to withdraw it because they're saying people aren't taking it up. But it seems like there's been massive failures in how, how it's been um, rolled out. So it's very clear that whilst we have this target for 2050 carbon neutrality in the country, we are not on track to meet it under current policy. And we need local government, especially when they have an ear um, in the national government to do as much as they can to push for more and say, if you don't have resources, give us more, because we see this as important and we can actually reduce the burden on the national government as well. It's a really fantastic tip uh, there, uh, because I sometimes I, I don't think that people... I don't, well, I, 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 it took me a while to realise it that the 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 impact that people in Hillingdon can have by having like the prime minister of the country in the borough and as your MP, you can have massive impact by just standing up and having your your say. So, I, I think that's a really fantastic tip there, Hannah. And thank you for your for your time. I I think it's it's been, it's been a fantastic discussion, and you're just such an enthusiastic, passionate person uh, to talk to. So uh, uh, I, I, I wish you the very best with the campaign. Um, it, it, it look, it sounds really exciting. I, I'm I'm also uh, also involved in the campaign as it happens, but uh, I just just as casually as you do. But uh, best wishes for it, and thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, this is this has been really fun and like at the end of the day it's just about normal people getting out there and having that conversation like mm. i'm a normal person i'm just from usley in hillingdon and i just saw a gap in local you know in there was no climate emergency i was like why we need a climate emergency declared so i went out and just talked to loads of people on the doorstep and actually mm. it was amazing because like i met so many people just you know who you know i'd walked out past on the street and have nothing to do with but people are so nice when you talk to them and it's like actually everyone wants to do something they just mm. don't know where to, where to start most of the time and people are people are scared um and they they just don't know what to do so it's like i think it's really important to come together and say mm -hmm. we're humans we're a bit scared mm -hmm. what do we do about this and actually through having that we can go yeah, actually there are, there is some stuff we can do about this I love how you have to like have to justify you're a normal person. I am actually a normal person. It's like it's like I, I'm a normal I'm a normal person as well. I I I I, I really really uh, I'm very very normal. Look, I have a head and I have some have some arms. It's it, I can tell you I'm not an alien. Yeah, I think I think it's very easy for people to look at like people anyone speaking the news or you know politicians or environmentalists and go they're not like like me they're not one of us and therefore it's very easy to dismiss what they're saying but actually like I'm just someone who cares about stuff and therefore I'm trying to do something about it and I think if people see it less of you know that massive barrier um to getting involved and like every everyone should be out there having these conversations and trying to make an impact because everyone's got something valid to say yeah. And, you know, everyone's fed up at the moment. I'm really fed up <laughs> with everything going on. And I think so many, everyone is. So, like, obviously there's something going wrong there. And maybe we just need to kickstart those, like, mm -hmm. face, okay, face-to-face -face Zoom conversations, same difference. <laughs> um, but, you know, get rid of Twitter and, like, yeah. you listen to your neighbour. Go, yeah. go chat to your neighbour and bring up the big issues. Why not? Like, yeah. Yeah. 
it's very it's a very uh, very good point i have to say <laughs> you sound very moralistic to me because i'm a big fan of twitter i very much enjoy <laughs> looking through twitter but i uh, i agree talking to your neighbors is a probably a far more effective method of doing it